It's five o'clock. Did your kids play today? Live from Center City in Philadelphia, this is Fox 29 News at 5. Freak accident or criminal intent? That is the question tonight about a dumbbell that crashed into a driver's windshield along the New Jersey Turnpike. The elderly driver is in the hospital tonight as state police continue to look for answers. Good evening. I'm Ian Page. And I'm Lucy Nolan. That dumbbell came flying out of nowhere. Our Dave Kinchin's trying to get to the bottom of all of this. Live now at Crozier Chester Hospital. Dave. Lucy, and in a very bizarre case, we can tell you the elderly victim is in serious condition here at the hospital in Chester. Meantime, state police are trying to piece all of this together. It is freaky and it is for real. Sky Fox over an SUV with a hole in the windshield in the shape of a dumbbell because that's exactly what New Jersey State Police say fell through. A 50 pound dumbbell injuring a 75 year old man driving along the turnpike in Oldman's Township, Salem County this morning. And the dumbbell, a weight at the dumbbell. Oh my gosh. We showed these pictures to drivers in the Salem County area who could not believe what they were seeing. That's crazy. I don't know how that would happen. That's what it looks like. <laughs> looks yeah. like somebody dropped something off a bridge on the, onto a car, and you, we all know that's been done before. But state police have yet to say that for sure. There is an overpass by the scene, but investigators have not yet said whether someone deliberately dropped the dumbbell from above or if it somehow fell off of a moving vehicle. What is clear is how close the impact was to the driver. He was taken to a waiting chopper that airlifted him from the scene near mile marker six. The elderly man now being treated at Crozier Chester Medical Center. Pretty crazy. I would think that there's probably somewhere around there has cameras that would, you know, pick it up. They'll figure it out. Drivers say it makes them think about the roadway dangers they have faced. Pebbles coming from uh... Mack trucks and stuff like breaking, cracking the windshield or whatever, but nothing like that. Makes you really wonder when you drive under an overpass. Well, we can tell you in this case, just moments ago, the New Jersey State Police sent out a tweet requesting anyone who was in the area around 7:30 when this happened to give them a call if they have any information. Lucy. All right, thank you very much, Dave. Winter weather authority. Now we've been in the deep freeze, of course, the coldest temps of the season. Live look at Reading, where the mercury dropped to eight itty bitty degrees this morning. Uh, and at Valley Forge, you can see the remains of this weekend's snowstorm. That ripped through the area. Some locals there braving the conditions to see the sights. Yeah. Good for them. After today's cold rain and an icy mix could be the new concern. Meteorologist Kathy Orr is standing by now. All right, Kathy, what's going on? We've got a lot of different uh, weather going on this week. <laughs> First, of course, the cold. The coldest morning of the season, the coldest day of the season. And behind me, you can see those frigid conditions heading toward Penn's Landing with a live look. A bitter start to the day. Take a look at some of these numbers. These are temperatures. They are not wind chills. Millville, four below. Atlantic City, zero. Mount Pocono, two. Allentown 6, Philadelphia 12. The previous coldest morning was 16, so we definitely beat that. Right now it's 22 in the city, 14 in the Poconos, 22 in Wilmington. Not a huge range in temperature with that cold air in place and some winds mixing up the atmosphere. You can see temperatures falling through the 20s tonight. A cold night, skies mostly cloudy by 11 p.m. with a temperature of 21. On Ultimate Doppler, we have clouds moving in from the west with a warm front and then a cold front that has snow out through the Great Lakes. Well, this next weather maker is going to bring a chance of some light snow to the north and west of Philadelphia, maybe a little bit of an icy mix late tomorrow. Philadelphia south and east will be seeing some rain out of this, but that winter weather advisory goes into effect tomorrow at 11 a.m. and continues until 10 o'clock tomorrow night. We'll talk more about this coming up with your seven day forecast, plus a wicked winter warm up in the seven day. Ian, I know you're going to love that. Yeah, but a wicked warm up doesn't sound like it'd be wicked at all, actually. All right, thank you very much, Kathy. Happening right now in Philadelphia's Fishtown neighborhood. For more than 24 hours now, a water main break continues to wreak havoc. Some people had to spend the coldest day of the year with no heat and no water. Tonight, sewer and water repairs are underway. Yeah, it's something Philadelphians have grown accustomed to this time of year. Our Fox 29's Bruce Gordon joins us live from the scene in Fishtown. Bruce. Yeah, Ian, being one of America's first major cities is kind of neat in some ways, but it also means our infrastructure is aging, in some cases literally crumbling. Philly will experience some 900 water main breaks each year, and about two-thirds of them will happen during these winter months. 
city water crew spent Monday capping lines and digging out the mess left behind when a brick sewer dating to the 1890s cracked, leading to a break in the cast iron water main installed in the 1860s. The result? The 2300 block of East Boston Street resembles the Grand Canyon. It's never a dull moment, is it? Uh, it's going to be quite a while, I think, till we're able to, to come back up the street. Get back to life as normal. Life as normal, right. The sinkhole caused by washed out soil below ground swallowed two cars Sunday, including one owned by Alyssa Banks. Just leaving and there was a big giant hole in the ground with my car in it. Not what you wanted to see. Tis the season. On the 1400 block of Fletcher Street Sunday, a six inch cast iron main from the 1890s ruptured, swamping the street and interrupting service to several customers. And last Thursday, on the 11,000 block of Millbrook, homes were flooded when an eight inch main installed in the 1950s cracked. Water Department spokesman John DiGiulio says more than 60% of the city's 2,800 miles of water mains are still cast iron. Each winter, as ice cold water pulled from the Delaware and Schuylkill Rivers courses through the rigid pipe, cracks can form. It's got nowhere to expand. Right, it doesn't there's expand. There's no it's expansion cast iron. and contraction with it. It just um, breaks. So then sometimes they just break. Uh, ductile iron has more give. On Boston Street, as in just about all city repairs and replacement projects, ductile iron pipes will be used as replacements. It's more flexible, less likely to break in the extreme cold. But fully replacing the old pipes all over Philly? They'd have to tear up every street in the city to fix it. I probably don't have the money for that. It's not happening. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> Now, some of the customers who lost water service in this incident Sunday already have it turned back on, but roughly a half dozen customers, those specifically right across from this big canyon here, are still without water and gas service and will likely to be without those utilities for at least a week. Ian? Oh, that is tough news. All right, Bruce, thank you. Meanwhile, Sky Fox is flying over another water main break today. This one's in Trenton, New Jersey. It happened around the Hughes Justice Complex, forcing state buildings to close in New Jersey's capital. The water department says they are still working to control the break tonight, but expect to restore service around 6 or 7 this evening. We are following some breaking news for you now in Delaware County. Sky Fox in Chester a few minutes ago, one person was shot in the area of the 1000 block of McDowell Avenue. We don't know whether that shooting victim is a man or a woman or the circumstances surrounding the incident. We do know the victim was taken to a local, hosp local hospital. We, of course, will bring you an update if we get more new information. We have confirmed a 20-year-old man was shot in the head and died in the 2200 block of Cecil B. Moore in North Philadelphia. He was rushed to Hahnemann Hospital, but it was too late to save him. Police are still trying to find the person who shot him. Developing right now in Orlando, a massive manhunt is underway for the gunman who killed veteran police officer Master Sergeant Deborah Clayton. And it has also turned deadly, that manhunt has. An Orange County Sheriff's deputy died in a traffic crash during the scramble to find 41-year-old Markeith Lloyd this morning. Police say Lloyd shot and killed the officer this morning outside of Walmart in Northwest Orlando. They say Lloyd had been on the run for weeks for the murder of his pregnant ex-girlfriend and that Master Sergeant Clayton either recognized Lloyd or someone had tipped her off when she approached him this morning. The reward to find Lloyd is now at $60,000. The best thing that he can do at this time is turn himself in. We would love to be able to resolve this situation peacefully without any further uh, uh, injury to anyone. Clayton is a 17 year veteran of the force. She was married and leaves behind two children. We don't yet know the identity of the sheriff's deputy who died in the crash. The suspect in Fort Lauderdale's deadly airport shooting is making his first court appearance. Esteban Santiago spoke to a federal judge today telling her he understands his charges and knows that he could face the death penalty. Prosecutors accused the 26-year-old Iraqi war veteran of opening fire at the busy airport baggage claim in Fort Lauderdale, killing five people and wounding even more. The FBI says Santiago flew on a one-way ticket from Alaska to Florida with a handgun checked in his bag. He's back in court later this month for a detention and arraignment hearing. He is being held without bail. In a little more than a week, President-elect Donald Trump is moving into the White House, and something many have suspected for weeks is finally coming to fruition. Trump has named his son-in-law 
Jared Kushner as senior advisor to the president. With confirmation hearings ahead and his promises of his first news conference in months, the coming days will have a lot packed into them. Lauren Blanchard has the latest on the Trump transition from Washington. It's a critical week for the presidential transition as the Senate Judiciary Committee begins confirmation hearings tomorrow. First up is Attorney General pick Republican Senator Jeff Sessions, whose nomination has come under fire amidst allegations of racial insensitivity during his time as a federal prosecutor in Alabama in the 1980s. They'll all pass. I think every nomination will be. They're all at the highest level. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying he expects all the nominees to be thoroughly questioned and confirmed. I'm hopeful that we'll get up to six or seven, uh, particularly the national security team, in place on day one. Political opponents of the president-elect have been pushing back against an accelerated confirmation process, with Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer recalling how Republicans objected to a similar move by Democrats over President Obama's nominees in 2009. We're not doing this for sport. Democrats feel very strongly that pushing for a thorough and thoughtful vetting process is the right thing to do. Today, senior transition officials announcing Mr. Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, will be a White House senior advisor. However, this move raises questions over the legality of hiring family members in the face of strict nepotism laws. Mr. Trump saying he'll answer that and more at his first press conference this week since winning the presidency. Well, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. But before we hear from the incoming president, first President Obama will give his farewell address tomorrow night in Chicago. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Well, meanwhile, the president-elect is not mincing words when it comes to actress Meryl Streep. He's firing back after she took him on during her Golden Globe speech. Why the Trump team says her speech cannot be taken seriously. A thief broke into a home stealing more than $1,100 worth of stuff. What he took off with, the homeowner is really going to miss, especially at this time of year. And how a local family still suffering through a tragedy honored police for the support they have felt from the officers. And all new at 6, the family of a woman killed by a former Penn professor speaks out the day after he leaves prison. He was um, a manipulative, abusive husband, uh, a cowardly monster. The message they have for the convicted killer.